Hello everyone, in this small tutorial series, we will go over on how to create trim sheet textures directly inside of Substance 3D Painter and on how they would be used in the production of 3D assets. So, first of all, what actually are trim sheets? Trim sheets are a way of combining various texture elements into one single texture so that you can reuse them on your 3D models. This is a great way to save both time and texture memory as you will only need to create and load in a single texture. Trim sheets are often used in video games, but they can be used for various situations across all industries. In this tutorial, we will show you one of those situations, which is creating an entire sci-fi corridor scene using one single trim sheet texture. Okay, so here we are inside of Substance Painter. Now I have loaded up a simple PBR metallic roughness scene with a plane. However, this is not completely a normal plane. If we go, for example, to our polygon fill tool over here, you can see that this plane has been divided up into many different segments. This is just geometry that has been added in your 3D software. You can do this in any 3D software simply by subdividing your plane. So why would we need this? We need this because for our trim sheet, we are going to break up our trim sheet into different sections. For example, one that has metal, one that has some details, one that has decals. And it is very easy to do that inside of Substance Painter when we can simply select our colors by literally clicking and dragging like this, for example. So if we have a look at our reference over here, you want to gather some reference so that you know exactly what details you want. This is the reference that we will be using. For example, I can see that we have some metal details over here. We have some little paneling details over here. We have some cables. Over here we have like another little strip of detail. And uh, if we go ahead and go to our other references, we can also see that we have some panel details and that we have some floor details. So we are going to go ahead and create a trim sheet that can literally handle everything from our floor to our pillars to our flat walls, to our walls with windows and everything in between. So what we're going to do now is we are going to create sort of a color ID map. We need to do this because we are going to divide up our trim sheet into different sections and we want to be able to select these sections later on so that we can actually add changes to them. So I like to work quite organized. So I like to create a folder over here and I'm just going to call this folder color underscore ID. Now, this is actually really easy. All you need to do is you need to create a simple fill layer. You want to go ahead and just turn everything off except for your color. And just let's start with a red color. We are going to create many different colors. We will just go ahead and we want to give this a name. So let's say that this color will become our base metal. As you can remember from my reference, we need a lot of base metal over here. And that is how you want to think about this. First of all, what you want to do is you want to go up here and add a black mask. And now you want to think for yourself about how much metal you would need. Because we need quite a bit of metal, we want to probably make this section a little bit bigger compared to other sections so that we have a little bit more space when we actually create our 3D models. So what we can do is we can go to our polygon fill tool, set it to our face selection and make sure that the color is white. And you can choose how big of a section you want. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a section probably around this big, maybe a little bit bigger. And what I want to do is I want to make sure that it is transitioning from left to right. This means that when I start UV unwrapping, I'm able to just go ahead and continue outside of my one by one space. Now, the next one that I love to add to any trim sheet is a construction line. As you can see over here, I've used a few different construction lines. And they are just like a great way to basically divide up surfaces, especially when you create trim sheets, because they can hide seams. So what we want to do is simply duplicate our layer. Call this, for example, line. And I like to then quickly just add a black mask again, which will reset our mask to black. Then in our color, we just want to give it a different color. This makes it, of course, a little bit easier to see. And our construction line does not need to be very big. So let's make it only too wide over here. And just like this, we can divide up our trim sheet until we have no space left. So I will just very quickly kick in a time lapse where I will divide this up. And then I will explain to you the divisions I made and why that I made them. So let's go ahead and kick in a quick time lapse. 
So here you can see that I've kicked in the time lapse and I'm currently creating just like some floor vents over here. I'm just gonna call them vents. And then next to this, I'm going to create some of those gears that I also saw in my reference. Now at this point, I got most of the long pieces out of the way. So I just want to go ahead and create a small section, which will basically be random details. So random decals, random norm map details, things like that. Then another section that will be for random text decals and signs and things like that. And then I just have like some special consoles. And of course, let's not forget that we also need to create our actual wall. So this one will be for our wall. We are going to use symmetry on our wall, which means that we only need to create half of it. The same happens for our floor. We are going to use symmetry on our floor in 3D, which means that we only need to create half of our floor. Now that we have our color ID map, the next thing that we are going to do is we are going to add anchor points to our masks by going down here and adding an anchor point. This way we can later on reference this mask when we actually want to start texturing it. I like to have individual anchor points on each mask so that I have full control to later on reference it. This is great because this means if we ever change this mask, it will simply be updated anywhere in our graph. So I can just simply go down here and on all of them, you can add an anchor point. And this is also why it was very important to name your fill layers because the anchor points will be named by the name of your layer, which will just make it extra handy. So our color IDs are now done. The next thing that we can do is we can minimize this folder, create a new folder, and we can call this normal details. And we can start by adding our normal map details to our trim sheet. So for our normal map details, I'm going to show you two different techniques. One of them is the height map based normal map details. And the second one is the normal map based normal map details. So the first one is a very common one that I'm sure many of you already know. It, and it's also the most easy one to use. What you want to do is you want to go ahead and add a fill layer. Give it a name. Let's call this one line, for example, because it's going to be our construction line that I've shown you over here. And then what we can do is we can turn everything off except for our height. Now, if you move your slider of your height down, it will dent the norm map in. If you move it up, it will push the norm map out. So we want to go ahead and just move it down because we want to dent our norm map in. Then if we add a black mask, whatever we paint in this black mask, for example, here you can see me paint, will translate into a height map detail. So as you can imagine, we can go down here, for example, to our 2D view only, and we can then just adjust our size of our brush to the thickness of our construction line that we want. And then to paint in our construction line, I like to click just outside of my square canvas, hold shift and then move all the way to the other side. And when you are holding shift, just make sure that the line has no anti-aliasing so it looks perfectly straight. And then you can click once again. So what this will do is over here, it will transition our line perfectly. But then over here, it does not always do this. So you can try to manually by hand clean it up. But sometimes that, that is quite difficult to do. Over here, like that's decent. However, another way that we can quickly clean this up and also have control over it later is simply by adding a filter to our mask. In this filter, if we just scroll down and add a transform, I'm going to set my scaling, for example, to 105, so 105. And then I can go in and use my offset to basically push this back into the location that I want. For example, minus. 0.015 and now it will always transition perfectly on both sides which means that we can repeat this over and over again now we can use similar techniques to actually also have cut out along with our norm map details for example we want to do this if we want to create these events over here what we want to do is we want to go ahead and go down here to our shader settings and set them from pbr metallic graph to a PBR metallic rough with alpha test, which will support some cutout. Then if we go ahead and go to our texture set settings, you just want to go to your channels and then you want to add a opacity channel, just like that. Now for our norm maps, let's go ahead and let's duplicate our line normal, remove the transform and add a new black mask to this. We are going to create this vent effect. For this effect, let's go ahead and call this vent. 
it is easier if we actually use a generator. So we want to navigate to our textures and type in tile, and then we are going to use the tile generator. Now you cannot drag the tile generator on your mask like this. You would just need to go down here to the magic wand tool. And then you want to go ahead and you want to add a fill layer, at which point it has a grayscale map in which you can drag in your tile generator just like this. Now the nice thing about this is that we need to create some type of capsules and we actually have a pattern type which is called capsule in here, like that. Now next there are some specific options that you want to set. I already of course figured out which options these are. One of them is setting the angle to 90 so that we have a 90 degree angle over here. Another one is going to our pattern transformation and setting our numbers which I found out that if we set our numbers to 38 and 33, it gives like quite a nice effect. And then for the rest, I wanted to set my scale a little bit bigger to 1.6 or maybe, maybe 1.5 over here. So you can very easily change all of these settings. Next, we probably want to give it some offset. So let's go to our offset. And then in our offset, set this to 0.5 which will give us this nice pattern. It reminds me of like a floor, for example. Next, I just want to balance things out a little bit. For example, I'm going to set my Y amount a little bit lower because I want to make sure that I get, in this case, exactly three of these within this space. And then you can go to your offset and you can, for example, play around with your global offset. And oh, there we go. If I set this to 0.01, you can go ahead and you can see you do want to make sure that you do not accidentally move it like I just did. You can see that now we have it perfectly sitting within this space. And it will also be perfectly tileable if we go from one side to the other. Then finally, if you want, you can go up. And let's say that we just go ahead and play around with our position a little bit to give it a bit more of a flat area. And then what we can do is we can actually cut out this flat area over here. Now, first of all, we are going to use our anchor point to make sure that this pattern will only happen within this space. We can do this by adding a very simple fill layer on top, go down to our grayscale, anchor points, and find your vent mask. And then all you want to do is you just want to go down here and you want to set this to multiply, which will mean that it will use this mask and everything else will be removed except for whatever is white. Finally, we can go back to the base of our fill layer, turn on the opacity slider, and when you start moving the slider down, you can see that it will cut out these shapes. And there we go, so now we have our vents. Now what I want to show you is I want to show you also how to create actual norm map details like you can see over here. So creating these norm map details is also very easy to do. This time what we want to do is we want to create a normal layer, and let's call this normal details. Then if we just go ahead and go to our library and close off the tile, every norm map that you see here, which you can base off the color, is a norm map detail that you can paint. So we can see, especially down here, a lot of them. Let's go ahead and scroll down and let's say that we want to paint in a panel. What I like to do is I like to use the projection for this. So I like to go up here to projection and then I'm just going to turn off everything except for the normal and this time also the opacity. So I'm going to drag in a panel that I want into both the normal and the opacity slot. Then if I hold S and right click, I can scale down my projection and I can of course just like zoom in here, scale it up and I can place it into a location I want. Let's say that I want to place it somewhere here. If you want, you can set your hardness over here up of your brush, which makes it a bit easier to paint it in. And then it's just a simple matter of painting this in. The reason why we also want to have this one in our opacity is because if we go down here to our material and to our opacity slot, what you can see now is we will instantly be able to generate a mask. However, in order to generate this mask, there's one last thing that we want to do. We want to go down here and add a levels. And then you want to set the affected channel to be your opacity channel. And then simply move your white slider to the left. And now you have automatically also generated a mask for every norm map detail that you have. And that is it. At this point, you can go ahead and press M to go back to your material. 
go back to your projection and whenever you want to add in another normal detail you can simply drag it in here and then you can for example move it down here and simply paint it in like this so now that i've shown you these techniques let's go ahead and kick in a time lapse where we will paint in a bunch of these different details on various panels like you see here so I just went ahead and kicked in the time lapse and we will finish this part off simply by placing some of our norm map details. Basically over here I'm just placing various details that I think can come in handy when I'm creating my sci-fi corridor. These are just different things like fans, some handles, just like some small stuff. And the nice thing is because we have a cutout on this, we can actually cut out the background which means that we can place these details on planes and use them as decals in our scene inside of Unreal Engine. Now over here, next to this, I also like to just basically uh, use a variation between the height details and normal details. Right now, I'm just switching over to height detail because I want to use my stripes, which is similar to the tile generator, to basically create some ridges. Now next to this, I can also create a blend. For example, I start off with a base using my height map details, and then I can blend these using normal map details. Uh, on this blend, I'm just adding a simple filter with a blur. And then I'm switching over to some norm map details where you can see me placing just some random norm map details that look a little bit more interesting. That, and this is like a little console, for example. Once again, now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create my wall panels. And these wall panels will use symmetry, which means that we will only create half of it. And then in 3D, we will simply flip it around to create the second half. I'm just going to create a more simplified version of these wall panels and also of the floor panels to make things a little bit easier and shorter for this tutorial. Over here what I'm doing is I'm adding a paint layer that I set to lighten to basically add any details on top. The reason I need to do this is because else the blending does not work. So if you ever have any blending problems, just try to add it into a paint layer and then play around with your blending modes. Now over here I'm just dope duplicating my ridges and I'm basically just altering them, adding a blur and then we can convert this into for example like a cable so it's like a, a rubber cable. And finally we can work on our floor panel. Our floor panel will just use really big height map shapes and we will use the invert function of these height map shapes to basically create a different pattern. So here you can see me pressing invert and then I once again paint out because you cannot use like an eraser or something like that. You would need to invert your shape in order to paint these details. Then on top of this, I'm going to just go ahead and add some more smaller details, for which I will use a paint layer that I set to subtract to basically properly blend all of these shapes together. So sometimes you just want to use this in combination with paint layers um, just for the blending. You can of course use symmetry if you want, but uh, I decided because I was doing this quite quickly that I was not going to go ahead and use symmetry. And now I'm just adding some small details. And that was about it for this part of this tutorial series. In the next part, we will go over on how to create our base colors. And I will also showcase you how I use them inside of Unreal Engine 5.